Provincial People's Assembly rules and procedures. The normal rules of the EFF meeting procedure will apply with the following additions. Only duly accredited delegates or those recognized by the steering committee will be allowed into plenary and commission sessions. All delegates will have the right to speak in plenary and all duly accredited participants will have the right to speak in commissions. Delegates wishing to speak must indicate their intention by raising their hands. The assembly chairperson will decide on orders of speakers and shall ensure that there, are, there shall be a spread of speakers. A delegate may speak in any official language. Delegates will be allowed to speak for a maximum of three minutes in plenary sessions. The assembly chairperson shall reduce or extend this period. Delegates will be allowed to speak once during the plenary session in each to, on each topic. Each speaker, after being recognized by the chair of the session, will stand at the microphone provided on the floor and state his or her name and branch before speaking. If the chairperson calls the speaker to order, the delegate will stop speaking until the chairperson authorizes him or her to continue. The delegate wishing to raise a point of order or ask a question will do so by proceeding to the mic and raise their point of order. On a point of order being raised, discussion shall be suspended to allow an intervention of not more than one minute. Thereafter, the chairperson will give his or her ruling. All motions must be proposed and seconded before they are approved for discussion. An exigency motion must be submitted in writing by the proposer and seconder to the steering committee. No business, business shall be allowed to be discussed which does not arise out of the reports or motions before the assembly unless agreed to by the steering committee. No other points of intervention shall be allowed except those provided in the rules of the assembly. Voting in plenary will be by secret ballot, the revolutionary code of discipline. In addition to the normal rules of the EFF constitution and revolutionary code of discipline, failure to comply with the following additional rules will constitute a disciplinary offense. Delegates are expected to attend all sessions and commissions and to be punctual. Delegue, dele, delegue, delegates must refrain from any behavior which would bring the EFF or the Provincial People's Assembly into disrepute. The documents distributed at the assembly may be confidential and delegates are not allowed to distribute such documents to persons who are not entitled to them. Any acts of sexual har harassment will be punishable. Delegates are expected to respect and obey the chairperson in all sessions and commissions. Delegates who disobey the instructions of the chairperson of the session will be removed from the assembly venue and have their accreditation tax confiscated. Any breach of discipline shall be reported to the steering committee which shall bring such violation to the attention of the assembly committee. EFF delegates shall not do the following. No one is allowed to bring weapons on the premises of the Provincial People's Assembly. No one is permitted to bring or drink alcohol at the premises of the Provincial People's Assembly. All alcohol will be confiscated and not returned to the owner. No one is permitted to enter the assembly premises under the influence of or smelling alcohol and or other intoxicating substances. No one has permission to resort to violence acts of any kind in the premises of the assembly. No one shall within the premises of the assembly act in a manner that exposes others to harm or death. No one shall within the premises of the assembly act in a manner that provokes tension. No one shall act in a manner that undermines the processions of the assembly. No one shall within the premises of the assembly take off clothes or demonstrate anger or happiness of any kind whatsoever or bring banners, posters or placards in support or against any candidate. 
No one shall within the premises of the assembly behave in a rowdy and aggressive manner. No one shall within the premises of the assembly be permitted to convene a party to celebrate anything resolved in the assembly. No one within the premises of the assembly shall behave in an abusive and disrespectful manner towards other delegates. No car shall bear or display any posters or material in support or against any fighter. No t-shirt or poster displaying support for or against any fighter will be allowed in the Provincial People's Assembly. No one without assembly accreditation tag will be allowed in the, on, in the premises of the Provincial People's Assembly. No delegate shall, shall be allowed to speak to the media about any issues in the assembly without the authorization of the assembly committee. No cell phone should be on during the proceedings of the assembly plenary sessions and commissions. No delegate will be allowed to sleep during the proceedings of the assembly plenary sessions and commissions. <laughs> Rules of lobbying. All political and organizational preparations for the EFF Provincial People's Assembly are regulated by the constitution of the EFF as well as the guidelines adopted by the relevant constitutional structure. The process seeks to ensure that all relevant structures, particularly the branches, are able to engage extensively in shaping the policy discussions and political outcomes of any assembly in accordance with the mass and the democratic character of the, of, of the movement. The following should constitute wrongful lobbying practices and unacceptable ways of influencing election processes. Singing of songs about preferred can candidates is strictly prohibited. Writing boards, t-shirts, and any form of indication with names of candidates is strictly pro prohibited. Making and waving signs about candidates supported or not supported by delegates is strictly prohibited. Raising and using funds and other resources to campaign for election. Distributing money to EFF members and structures as part of a campaign for elections. Production of t-shirts, posters, and other paraphilia to promote a particular list of candidates. Promising positions or other incentives or threatening to withhold such as, a me as means of gaining support. Using the media to promote a particular list of candidates and to spread malicious rumors, falsehoods or allegations against those with whom you disagree. Leaking con confidential information to the media, secret interaction with journalists with the intention to get them to write stories on internal organizational issues or communicating internal decisions or processes to the media without due authorization. Negative campaign which relates to attacks on the integrity of other fighters both within the structures of the movement and in other forums. Suppressing honest and legitimate debate about the caliber of candidates in formal meetings of the movement. Manipulating membership figures or engaging in fraudulent membership recruitment practices. Allowing structures or individuals to condone violation of constitutional provisions and or regulations and or failing to report such violation when they occur. Using the officers, resources and staff of the EFF or any state institution or company as a machinery to promote a particular list of candidates. Using violence, intimidation and threats to coerce those who do not who hold a different view. Setting up structures outside the organization to promote or lobby for a particular candidate, candidates. Convening meetings to discuss leadership issues under the false pretext that they are organized constitutional structures. Production and distribution of documents and pamphlets not approved by the structures of the organization will not be allowed. In line with these rules, all members without exception must abide by the constitution of the EFF, rules and regulations, and the Revolutionary Code of Discipline, as adopted and amended from time to time, as well as all policies and decisions properly adopted, made in terms of the constitution. According, accordingly, all EFF structures and members should ensure that these guidelines, rules, and procedures are adhered to and enforced in the run-up to and at the Provincial People's Assembly. In particular, 
Any lobbying that violates the EFF constitution brings the good name, image, and the integrity of the EFF into disrepute will be subject to a disciplinary inquiry, inquiry in line with the constitution and the code of conduct. Lobbying shall stop as once the process of electing the new provincial command team has been concluded at the provincial people's assembly. Once the new provincial command team is elected, it becomes the duty of all EFF members to unite and rally behind the newly elected leadership, regardless of the preference we had before the elections. Thank you, peers. Thank you very much, Commissar. Uh, these are the rules and procedures of an assembly. We can adopt them. They've been adopted by the Central Command Team, which is the highest decision body in our revolutionary movement called the EFF. So unless if there's a clarity-seeking question, then we can afford that opportunity. But with this, it is done. We have concluded in the Central Command team about this. If there is no such, therefore, we are going to take this opportunity to give the student command in Gauteng, the provincial secretary of student command in Gauteng, fight, fighter Agnes Ramalebe, to come and give us the message of support. Amanda. Manda, Manda, Awe, Tu, Mata, Aruna, Long live the EFF, long live, long live the EFF, long live, long live the EFF students' command, long live, long live the EFF students' command, long live. To the Deputy President of the EFF, Commissar Floyd Chivambo, Convener of Deployees, Commissar Renelio Machabela, Acting Deputy Chair of the Province, Commissar Itani Mukwebo, all Commissars present, the, Deputy, the President of the EFF is seen in absentia, Commissar Sitlelonzi, all delegates. My name is Agnes Ramalepe, as the Provincial Secretary has introduced me. I am currently the Provincial Secretary of EFFSC, and I must say it is an honor to be afforded a slot or a space on this auspicious occasion that is currently happening in our province. On behalf of the EFFSC and on behalf of every youthful person in this province, we congratulate the Gauteng province for sitting, for convening its third People's Assembly. We would again, comrades, like to, on behalf of the EFFSC, welcome everyone to the province of Gauteng, all regions present here, including delegates, and I see that we have a lot of delegates that are from the student command, and we must say, as the provincial secretary, we are very proud that young people are taking the space and that young people are now contesting positions in mother body. It shows that the future is indeed bright for not only South Africa, but for the rest of Africa. Again, comrades, I would like to thank, uh, congratulate the Gauteng PCT for having met the 90% which is required for a, a branch, for a, a for a PPA to convene, we definitely look, look up to the PCT for convening such a, a program. We again congratulate the PCT for having done a wonderful and splendid job for the years that they have been in the province, and we wish the newly elected leadership that's going to be elected tomorrow a fruitful and a wonderful four years. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much, uh, Obal of Gauteng, Student Command. Uh, I'm going to take this opportunity now to bring on our member of the Central Command Team deployed in Gauteng, convener of Gauteng, Commissar Mam Rinelwe,
to take it from here. Amanda, thank you very much. Amanda, away to, away to, Amanda, thank you comrades, my task is very simple, I'm here today to introduce to you a leader, a leader of a revolutionary movement, a freedom fighter, the Press, Deputy President of the Economic Emancipation Movement, an academic, a philosopher. Over to you, the Deputy President. Amanda, Amanda, viva the economic freedom fighters, viva, viva the economic emancipation movement, viva, forward to socialism, forward, Amanda, away to, thank you very much, Commissar Nelwe Mashabela, the convener of Central Command Team deployees in the province of Houting, the CCT members who are deployed here in the province, the leadership of the province, the provincial command team, and the regional command teams, branch command teams, but most importantly, the delegates to this third provincial people's assembly here in the province of Houting. Just before we give the official message from the Central Command team, just some few observations and guidance that we have to provide is that we started just after 10 o'clock in the evening. The intention today was to take the political, organizational, and financial reports. But because now time is against us, what we can do today is to take the message from the CCT, take the political report, make some reflections, and then go rest. And then tomorrow, we're going to start with the organizational report early in the morning, then take the treasurer's report, and then we'll then, then deal with the program as is outlined in the copies that you have been given for this uh, assembly. Another observation, because the Secretary General of the EFF had said that we should come and oversee this people's assembly. Is I observed that when we were singing Nkosi Sikelela, most of the males remained with their caps on, caps like this. It is one of the unwritten traditions, but now which you must know, that you can keep on the beret when you are sing, you're singing Kosi Sikele. But you cannot keep any other cap. The females can keep any other cap when you are singing Kosi Sikele. This is a song which is a prayer for all the oppressed masses of our people. It's a song which in 1897 was composed by Enoch Santanga, Santonga. And Seven stanzas to that Nkosi Sikelela were added in 1927 by S.E.K. Mkai. 
So the version which we just sang today, which we sing in all the gatherings of the EFF, is a consistent which is composed by Enoch Sontonga and some editions made by Samuel Edward Kunem Kai. And that song is the official anthem, the national anthem of the countries of Namibia, of Zambia, of Tanzania, and of Zimbabwe. So if you check in Zimbabwe, in Tanzania, and in Namibia, they utilize the local languages, but you make the same prayer every time before they start their official gatherings. So we should, as the EFF, all the times show the necessary respect so it must not happen again. I think that is uh, quite clear. Now, Gauteng is a very important province in the life of the EFF. It is in this province where the foundation of the EFF is. The first consultative meetings when we're asking the question of what is to be done happened here in the province of Gauteng. So, in whichever way you characterize it, the foundation of the economic emancipation movement, which is now a revolutionary political party represented in almost all councils, in all the provincial legislatures, and represented firmly in the National Assembly, National Council of Provinces, but also represented in the National Assembly of the Parliament of Namibia. The foundation is this province. So this province is very important in the life of the economic freedom fighters. But also the center of the EFF, the head office, the Winnie Matikizela Mandela House, the head office of the EFF is here in this province. It is a very important province. The National Assembly on what is to be done. The assembly that responded to the question of what is to be done was constituted in this province. And to signify the importance of this province, the 10th anniversary of the EFF, which is one of the most important events in the life of an organization, in the life of any living being. The 10th anniversary of the EFF is going to take place here in the province of Gauteng, which is the center of our movement. And it is important because also in terms of other issues, in terms of the other dynamics and other observations, Houting is a very important province in the life of South Africa. It is one province that has got the highest concentration of people from all over the country and all over the African continent and all over the world. 26% of the population of South Africa resides in this province. Geographically, in terms of space, spatially, it is the smallest province. But in terms of population, 26% of the population of South Africa, the statistics South Africa estimates that we have got 60 million odd South Africans now. So 26% of that resides in this particular province. But also, the fact that you have got the highest number of people who are coming here for aspirational purposes, a bigger number of people who are residing in this province, they are coming here, they are looking for, for jobs, they are seeking refuge from the poverty in the provinces where they come from. They are seeking refuge from the poverty in the countries where they come from. But also, Houteng, it is one of the most youthful provinces in terms 
of the population dynamics. So there's the highest number of people whom we can characterize in the category of young. Both youth and young adults in the manner that it is. Because it is people who in majority of times are still looking for opportunities to sustain themselves, to sustain their lives. So when you gather in a provincial people's assembly of a Gauteng province, you must have that at the back of your mind. You must always appreciate that this is a province which generates more than 30% of the country's economy. That is where majority of economic activities happen. That is where the highest number of wage earners is. The industrial working class, the informal traders. So this PPA must have that in full consideration that you are at the center of a site which in revolutionary characterization of which are the sites of revolutions. This is a site where a revolution otherwise was supposed to be happening and much more fervent for a particularly working class organization like the Economic Freedom Fighters. So this Provincial People's Assembly, the third one in the province, must have that in its mind. The capital city, the seat of power, of South Africa is in this province. If we want to take power, we'll have to go and overthrow those who are in the capital city in the union buildings. If we were to adopt the any other revolutionary means to take power as is outlined in the constitution of the EFF, if we were to utilize any other revolutionary means except elections. Those who are going to overthrow, we're going to overthrow them here in Gauteng and claim authority all over South Africa. This is the seat of power. This is where a working class organization that opposes, that stands opposed to the status quo, should be strongest. I don't know if the EFF is the strongest here in the province of Gauteng. We are going to talk to that in terms of uh, what should happen when we are talking to the expectations of this Provincial People's Assembly. Because all of you as delegates here are disciplined members of the EFF who have read the Constitution the founding manifesto and the discussion documents and the code of conduct. I'm sure you're all aware that a provincial people's assembly is convened as per section 18 of the EFF constitution, which says that every four years we should gather all branches of the EFF, at least a minimum of 90% of wards in a region in a province should have convened branch people's or general's assemblies to send delegates to a provincial people's assembly to take reports from the leadership that was in office in the period before. But also the constitution says that the provincial people's assembly must adopt a program of action for the next four years. So without us even reminding you about that, the most important outcome of this PPA is not the election of leadership. The most important outcome of this PPA will have to be the resolutions and a program of action of how do we consolidate the ground towards socialist power. How do we build the struggle for socialism? How do we intensify the EFF as a leading formation of all working class forces? As a result, all of you must participate in the commissions which are going to be outlined when the time arrives here. 
there is going to be a commission that is going to specifically focus on the 2024 elections. The 2024 elections are going to be a turning point in the history of South Africa. And it is not a given that in that turning point, the EFF will be playing a role. It is not cast on stone that when the ANC loses its outright majority in the province, when the ANC loses its outright majority at national level, it is not a given that the EFF is going to be playing a central role in that dynamic. It will come out of our objective and subjective contributions, part of which must come out of this PPA. It will come out of our determination, our focus as members of the EFF, our unity, our discipline. It is not a given that when the ANC goes below 50%, it is automatic that the EFF will be playing a central role there. Read the election results of the EFF and the ANC in the region of Tswane. Both the ANC and the EFF do not make 50% of the vote there. That applies to the city of Johannesburg. Where both the ANC and the EFF are insignificant. All these other political parties have combined themselves and constituted government to the exclusion of the EFF. The ANC is dying a natural death. But it cannot be correct that you have got hung municipalities. And the EFF is not at the center of what should happen in those municipalities. So part of the outcomes of this Provincial People's Assembly should be to recenter the EFF as a political movement, as an, as an organization that matters everywhere. There can be issues that are deliberated and would not have a say anywhere in Houting, a significant say. You will know, fighters, that the insourcing in Johannesburg of security guards of general workers, of cleaners. Happened, that motion was passed because between 2016 and 2021, the EFF had a significant voice and whoever was in office knew that you need the EFF to survive in the city of Johannesburg. The same in turn. Resolutions about providing for student accommodation converting some of the buildings in Johannesburg for student accommodation purposes. Those were adopted because we had a say, we had a significant say in those municipalities. I can tell you now, those who are in charge in Tswane can reverse all those decisions. Can say this insourcing is not necessary, it is depriving our funders of business opportunities who are going to pass a council a resolu resolution and reverse the gains which the EFF had already begun to make in turn. They can pass that motion and nothing will happen. The sky will remain exactly where it is. It won't fall. So the weakening of the EFF, the displacement of the EFF at the center of political power electorally compromises the lives of our people. You can imagine what will happen to those workers who thought before the EFF came to Tswane, came to the city of Johannesburg, we used to be paid 2,500 sometimes in an envelope. We used to be treated like we're not workers. Now there is insourcing were paid upward of 8,000 rand per month, were given proper leave days, 
were treated like employees of the municipality. And then when we lose that voice, we are compromising those workers, the ordinary people that benefit from the efforts of the EFF. In Johannesburg, we had passed the resolution in council to have some of the clinics opening 24-7. 24 hours per day and seven days a week. And of course, with the concentration of people here in the province, you will need such a healthcare facility. But that can be reversed if we do not reassert the organization as the most important instrument, a fighting weapon in the hands of our people. This organization is not an instrument for your career progress. It's not a step ladder for you to, to be a councillor or member of the legislature or member of parliament. This organization is a weapon in the hands of the oppressed masses of our people. That is what it is. I've just given you practical examples that if you undermine the unity, the strength, the determination, the discipline of this organization, you are compromising ordinary people on the ground. So when we discuss elections, all commissions here, must reflect on elections. What do we do better? How do we position ourselves better? How do we convince more and more people to vote for the EFF? There will be commissions on media and communications. There will be a commission on finance and fundraising. There will be an organization, an, a commission on organizing and mobilization. Now, there's a difference between mobilization and organizing. And there seem to be too much concentration here in the province on mobilization. Mobilization is to go and call people to a community meeting or to a rally. That is relatively easy. You can call, we can say to you tomorrow that at the end of this PPA, we want 20,000 people in Masharing Stadium in Timbiza. You can easily do that. You can put up loud alas and get people there. Majority of them will not be registered to vote. I will explain to you why almost always majority of those people are not registered to vote. Because here in this province, Commissar Renel, majority of adults above the age of, 15, of 18 are not on the voters' roll. 55% of the people who are above the age of 18 in the whole of Houting are not on the voters' roll. So mobilization is that we can call people loud, hey, please come to the meeting, the commander-in-chief is coming, they will come. But organizing means how do you systematically constitute those people into ground forces of the EFF, into activists of the EFF, who are registered to vote, who will have the necessary political and ideological capacity to could persuade other people. That is what organizing is. And there has to be a proper definition of this relationship between mobilization and organizing. To a greater extent, as a movement, we have mastered mobilization. I'm not sure if we have mastered organizing. And how do we know about that? On election days, here in the province, which we say is the foundation of the EFF, on election days, you still have voting districts that do not have volunteers of the EFF. You still have VDs with no presence of the EFF, sometimes even party agents. Why? Because we have not yet mastered the art of proper and excellent 
organizing. We should, when we go to the Commission on Organizing and Mobilization, come with clear resolutions as to how do we perfect organizing ourselves into solid structures? How do we stop this phenomenon of a mobile crowd? Every time this gathering is the same faces. You address a meeting in Ekuruleni, in Katoras, it's the same people. You go to Tembisa, it's the same people. You cross to Ivory Park, it's the same people in the city of Johannesburg. You go to Cosmo City, Deep Sloot, the same people. Alexander, the same people. The organization must be present everywhere. The organization must have life in each and every corner, in each and every VD of this province. Let me give you a very sad reality about our trajectory in this province. And it is good that we must do so because we always take a leaf from Amilka Cabral who says that we must tell no lies and claim no easy victories. In 2014, when the EFF participated in its first elections, the EFF here in the province of Houteng received 471,000 votes. Out of the 1.2 million votes, 1.1 million votes which were received nationally. It was not 1.2, it was 1.1. What that meant is that in 2014, this foundation of the EFF anchored it with 40%, if not more than 40%, of the entire votes we got in all other parts of South Africa. That is the number that we got, which represented 10.26% of the vote in the province of Gauteng. In 2016, we reduced the votes of the warm bodies to 400,000, 399,000. Number of people who voted for the EFF were 399,000. And because local government elections has got lower 10 out, the percentage increased to 11%. There was just a one percentage increase between 2014 and 2016 here in the province of Houting. And then in 2019, there was both a quantitative nominal and percentage increase of the votes that the EFF received here in the province of Houting, we received warm bodies, human beings who woke up in the morning on the election day of 2019 to vote for the EFF was 613,000 which represented 13.5 percent but in 2021 of course there were difficulties of COVID voter turnout we decreased the number of warm bodies was 308,000 from 613,000. We did not just decrease in terms of the warm bodies. We also decreased in terms of the percentage because our percentage now from the 2021 elections in Houting is 11.8%. That is a cause for concern. The central command team that sat immediately after the 2021 local government elections, at the beginning of this year, we characterized the reduction of votes of the EFF anywhere as a form of counter-revolution. So those who partake or lead in structures that are going to lead to the reduction of EFF votes are participating in a counter-revolution. They are actually counter-revolutionaries. That is why in a different province we took a decision to dissolve 
branches, regions, and the entire province to restart again. Because we realized that it looks something was lost in terms of what were the founding inspiration and the fire that drove the EFF. What happened to the 300,000 odd people who voted for us in 2019 but did not come in 2021? Because COVID affected all of us, but at least the call of the soldiers whom were convinced to vote for us should have come back to say, we are still here. What led to that? This provincial people's assembly, the third one in Houting, must respond to that. I've said already, fighters, that what we'll expect from this PPA, the most important thing, is how do you take the people of Houting who are not registered to vote to go and register to vote and not just that, to vote for the EFF. That is what he must go and deliberate because in this province, we have got 7.6 million adults, people above the age of 18 who are not registered to vote. That is 55% of the adults that reside in this province. And those that are registered, majority of them were registered by the ANC, by the DA. They have got their own constituencies. How do we run our own registration campaign? That is what this PPA must respond to. Because the outcomes of this PPA are the tools that are going to guide us to the 2024 national and provincial elections. So whatever you do, whatever you discuss, that must obsess you as to how do we get all these people to be on the voters' roll. In Ekuruleni, it's 1.5 million people who are not on the voters' roll, who are eligible. In Emfuleni, it's 207,000. And West in Emfuleni, it's 63% of the people who are supposed to be on the voters' roll, not there. In Midval, it's 37,000, which is 61%. In Lisey, it's 44,000, not on the voters' roll. In Muhale City, it's 155,000, which is 55%. In Marafong City, it's 68,000, who are not on the voters' roll. In Randwest West City is 91,000, which is 60%, who are not on the voters' roll. In the city of Johannesburg, is 2.5 million potential voters who are not on the voters' roll, which is 47%. In the city of Tswane, it's 1.5 million people who are eligible to vote but are not on the voters' roll. We won't win this revolutionary struggle. This economic freedom we talk about. This expropriation of land without compensation for equal redistribution will not happen if we do not have these people on the voters' roll. Will not happen if we do not have the numbers. The building of state capacity with the aim of abolishing tenders will not happen if we do not have these people on the voters' roll. The provision of free quality education, health care, and sanitation for all will not occur if we do not have these people on the voters' roll. The development of the African economy and the move of, from reconciliation to justice will not happen if we do not have these numbers on the voters' roll. The seven cardinal pillars will not be realized if we do not have the quantitative strength. We move from the basis that qualitatively, maybe we are a majority. But in terms of numbers, we are not a majority. 
Fighters, I know we are very proud of what we have achieved thus far as a movement. For a 10-year-old organization to achieve what we have achieved is commendable. But the road is still very long. We are still going very far. We are still in the beginning. Here in Gauteng, if our percentage now is 11, 12, 13 percent, what that means is that 88, 89 percent of the voters of Gauteng have not yet been persuaded to vote for the EFF have not yet been reproduced by ourselves to see and understand society in the manner that we do. That is what this PPA should produce. This is what we should produce as this PPA. Because the situation out there is hopeless. The Democratic Alliance is not an option. Amen Mashaba is clowning is not an option. The ANC is not an option. They are even institutionalizing factions in the ANC. Like, you know, when they've got lobby groups towards conferences, they give them names, they even design logos for them, they even have special songs for them. A habit that must not be allowed to exist in the EFF. Factionalism must be nipped in the bud in the EFF. Of course, you can persuade each other as to who must play what role at the provincial level. But once a PPA has taken a decision, all those lobby teams and all of those things and lobby engagements must come to zero. We must have one organization that is united on purpose. How do you institutionalize a lobby group? On the other side, they even design logos for a lobby group, like CR17 and DZ, or something like that. And then they design, the next thing, they're going to be hiring offices. They even have a special attire for their, their faction. We can't allow that to happen in the EFF. Because we are an organization that is founded on, on discipline. And discipline is non-negotiable in the EFF. The constitution of the EFF says that discipline is non-negotiable. It's not a side issue. It is the essential part of us doing what is expected of us. You know, discipline means that when we say that this is what a branch should do, this is what a region should do, this is what a province must do, you must do exactly that. Don't go and be creative and do something else. And if you want to be even much more productive, add self-discipline into that as well. Where you set for yourself some targets that are positive. To say that I am a public representative. I know that because I'm a public representative, I must enhance and harness my levels of understanding by going to school. Go and register at school, pass the school, and still be productive in the organization. That is self-discipline. Without anyone monitoring you, if you can reach and fulfill your own personally set objectives. You are not self-disciplined. If the only discipline that you have is the one of complying to rules and regulations, you are just a person of compliance. We want fighters and ground forces who are both disciplined and self-disciplined in the aim of fighting for economic emancipation in our lifetime. The commandant chief is going to come and close this PPA. He's going to reflect on a variety of national issues and the global balance of forces, of under which terrain are we waging the struggle for economic freedom in our lifetime. One of the immediate tasks which it looks like 
we are going to achieve is that we are going to remove Ramaphosa as a president of the country before the end of this year. Because he is a fraudster, he's a kidnapper, he's an imposter. He's a con man. He can't even justify himself for all these things that he has been doing. But the commander in chief is going to speak to all of those issues. Fighters, so that we allow time for the political report and reflections. Let us, all of us, go to commissions. Even our contributions in plenary must be meaningful. You can't come to a PPA and go home without having said anything. The reason why we give you space in commissions is because in smaller groups you, you, you can be able to contribute something there. Because if you are in a commission or in a whole PPA and then you go back to your branch and then they ask you, how was the PPA? What did you do there? What was your role there? Your report is that you're going to say we ate, we ate, and we ate, and we sang, we sang, and we sang. And that can't be you. You should say that actually if you see this perspective, we have given them the experiences of our branch in terms of how we won some of the VDs. We have given, we have shared the experiences, we have articulated it now the entire province appreciates this is how we should resolve the problems. You are not here as complainants of your branches. You are here as delegates of branches to come and give a proper perspective of what is to be done between now and the next PPA. You can't go to a commission and when a chairperson of a commission is there, you say, my name is Leonard Mushwana from Ward 44, the chairperson of Ward 44 from since the formation of the EFF. They, I'm, I'm Leonard Mushwana from Ward 44. I want to complain that in our ward there's a faction there that has been disrupting us. What do we do? No. You must come with solutions, all of you, in terms of what happens. That is the only way that we're going to make sure that the struggle for economic emancipation in our lifetime lives forever. Thank you very much. Avanza, <laughs> away too. Uh, thank you very much, the Deputy President of the Economic Freedom Fighters. I was taken by the speech. Uh, I even forgot that I'm still the a person who's chairing this session for now. What a powerful uh, speech. We should give it a round of applause again. Thank you very much, Deputy President, for that input. We appreciate it. Uh, those that will come after us will take it from there. Uh, without any waste of time, we are on the item of political uh, report by the acting chairperson, Commissar Itane Mukwev. Over to you, my chair. Thank you very much. Amanda, Awe, Tu, Mata. Yaruna, Matimba, Ahina, Manda. Thank you very much, uh, Provincial Secretary. Greetings to all delegates representing branches of EFF in Gauteng Province from all five regions. We welcome all the regional command team leaders led by chairpersons and secretaries of five regions. We especially welcome our deputy president who is in our midst today. And we can't forget our ground force, our CCT deploy convener, Mamar Neule Mashavela, with your deploys to this province. We thank the CCT leadership collective for the support 
counseling and general guidance provided to us as a province over the last four years. Fighters, economic freedom is an emancipation movement which draws revolutionary courage and inspiration from the Cuban July 26 movement. In this assembly, we must remain committed to the ideological content of this movement. We locate the struggle of economic emancipation within the long resistance of the black majority to the racist, colonial, and imperialist political, economic, and social domination. This movement in, the, in that regard is the only alternative left through of the ideals of Marxism and Leninism and Fanon. What was the giant liberation movement over the 10 decades old is now dead and its flag is losing the meaning and the momentum against gravity. This assembly is not just of delegates. These are revolutionary messengers from branches who carry along the heavy mandate of security guards, the overworked brothers and sisters who are paid peanuts. These delegates are mandated by domestic workers who raise kids of racist whites without leave and forced to neglect their own. This assembly of the farm workers who are butchered because of they are mistakenly called monkeys and who harvest food they cannot afford due to their salaries. This assembly is the assembly of medical pra practitioners who work in the overpopulated township of hospitals in this province. The assembly of the Zimbabwean fellow who, who find comfort and the security in the EFF. Therefore, comrade delegates in the Marxist tradition, we maintain that the scientific and optimistic view that correct ideas emerge through debate and democratic persuasion, through social practice where the ideas are tested and verified. The dead ghosting of our people on service delivery in this province is a shame to the ruling party, which means the EFF must have solid branches and leadership in the regions, leadership who are going to be elected in this province, who are going to carry the mandate of economic freedom in our lifetime. Fighters and commissars, carrying a mandate is not easy. It needs dedication. It needs an humble leader, um, humble disciplined members of the EFF who knows they're elected to serve the people of this province, more especially our people who are suffering in this province. Comrade delegates, the EFF in Houghton observed, observed the shame when the ANC administrators of the ruling class joined the hands with the Rhine Wings parties, rejected their progressive motion to redress the structural inequality of our society. To date, the government has settled over 80,664 claims and spending over 65 billion rands of financial compensation. According to 2017 land audit, white people own 72% of the land and 19% and is shared between the colored and Indians. The black majority own 4% since the dawn of democracy. Even more scary, females own less than 13% of the land. This confirms that the government strategy on land redistribution is a futile exercise. In the EFF, once we take government, women of this country will be the biggest beneficiaries, precisely because women are still changed to the yoke of triple oppression, ranging from racial, class, and gender oppression. The EFF labor desk made steadfast intervention in a lot of issues raised in this province concerning the workers. Fighters and commissars, I want to warn all the members of the EFF who are dealing with labor desk matters. We must not be corrupt. We must give our people confidence because unions, they failed in this province to assist our workers. If you go to provincial office, you go to regional offices, all five of them, every day, every day, there are people who are getting inside who want assistance from the EFF. The question is, 
how do we convert these people to vote for the EFF? Because when they've got problems, when they've got issues in their working space, they come and look for the EFF. That is the question which each and everyone who's hearing this message must ask himself or herself. What do we do about these people who always choose the EFF when they've got issues in the working space? Fighters, we must not be involved in shenanigans of taking money, selling our workers in our province. That itself is going to damage this organization, is going to kill this organization. And I want to warn you, when we give you responsibilities of leading this area of labor desk, you must bring the dignity of our people. Moreover, the EFF notes with dismay at the fact that Special Investigation Unit authorized by the dollar man Ramaphosa to prove any allegation related to the misuse of COVID-19. I can tell you, our people under the hands of the employers, they are suffering. Our people are not given what is due to them. Our people are suffering in the township where you can see that they've got no confidence to the current state which is governing this province. Comrades, it is fundamental fact and a matter of confidence that the public, particularly here in Gauteng, have lost confidence in the law enforcement agencies. Studies on policing indicate that police legitimacy is underpinned on the public confidence. Police force has been murdered by the culture of bribe during crucial duties and in turn assist criminals to get away. This negates the profession and mad respectable badge. The effectiveness of the police department must be engaged and we will defeat the corruption in this crucial and critical department. We know that it stems from the top. Quite shockingly, we are angered to that note SAPS released a damning crime statistics covering the first 2022-2023 financial year. As many as 6,424 6, people were murdered in South Africa in the first quarter of 2022-2023. This, it shows that the police, they need to be revived and do what they're supposed to do. We are officially very top and the epicenter of murder, attempted murder, car hijacking, robbery at residential premises and commercial crimes. Fighters defending our communities must be part of our task. We must also salute the many matches you led to police stations fighting against the deliberate capture of our public institution that exist to protect and keep our communities safe. Fellow delegates and leaders, on the 29th of May 2022, the EFF Student Command of Houghton convened their much anticipated second provincial student assembly to which I attended and presided. More importantly and impressive, the student wing of the EFF resolved on very critical policies, uh, policy position. The PSA was built up to the NSA, which sat on the 22nd to the 24th of July and elected its new leadership under the president, Sitle Lonzi, together with collective. The EFF will strengthen its relations with the youth and students of the EFF at all material times. The new leadership, we learned the excitement that you have adopted a new constitution. In that, I repeat, in that on this new constitution, for one to be a member of the EFF student command, you must first be a member of the EFF mother board. And also, you must register with the IEC. That is what the student command have adopted. This is the cornerstone and a critical resolve and a very steadfast intervention to the culture of the campuses and presidents winning SRC election with an overall majority and yet the EFF councillor candidate losing election in the same vicinity. Provincial Secretary, the mandate of this young lions is mounting. Recently, the useless Premier of Gauteng Makura announced a collective PYW affiliates clueless people to form part of the Youth Advisory Board. 
We wonder if those people appointed are aware of the staggering youth unemployment currently in this province, which sits at 34.5% in the first quarter of 2022 to 2023. The expanded definition of unemployment, which now includes those of us who have given up on looking for jobs. These figures take you to a staggering 46.2%, and even more worryingly, youth unemployment rate measuring job seekers between 15 and 24 years old remain at 66.5%. Our people are zombified, demonized under this government of ANC. We are further out of breath, and the education must rescue our kids is equally broken, characterized by inequalities and discrimination of children from the poor communities. There is no clean guy in that ANC of Gauteng. The current chairperson is trying his dark and dive. The East Department took 430 million of corruption scandal, which no one was charged, even the HOD, even himself, because the ANC rewarded the leaders who are corrupt in their system. When the EFF takes over, we are ready to make sure that we serve our people, people in this province with dignity. Fighters, the emergence, emergence, emergence of modern economies is underpinned in, on industrialization. In our funding manifesto, the fifth cardinal pillar demonstrates that we must engage in a massive protected industrial development within the context of the state-led industrial policy. Economies rise after the World, world War II Economies of cluster of East Asian nation grew dramatically, led by the set of actively intervention government. These countries were transformed from economic backwaters into dynamic industrial powers. These are so-called Asian tigers, South Korea, Hong Kong, Singapore, and Taiwan, followed by, by of course, China. Ground forces. What should be our ideological outlook of Ukraine and Russian war? We learn from Lenin that the point of view of Marxism, that is of modern socialism, for socialism the main issue in our discussion by socialists on how to assess the war. What attitude, attitude to take to adopt towards it, it is in this, what is the war waged for? And what last stage, stage and directed it? We Marxists do not belong to the category of people who are unqualified opponents of all wars. We say our aim is to achieve a socialist system of society. Comrade delegates, the world have moved to a complex, contradictory situation, not for the emerging economies. First, delegates, in America in 2008, Greece in 2010, Venezuela in 2012. Recently, last week, we just heard that what transpired in Turkey a few weeks ago. In these instances, we have now witnessed low levels of economic growth, job losses, current vitality in the constant reminder that the world remains extremely vulnerable. This is made worse by natural disasters which we cannot ignore, fires in Portugal, Greece, and California, heat waves in Europe, drought in most parts of the world, including last year drought in Cape Town, a point which I will come back to when, when I deal with domestic issues. The earthquake that hit Venezuela recently is another reminder that we cannot separate economic struggles with environmental struggles, or else we run a risk of misguided revolution without a future. We must never lose sight of the chaos of the climate and broader ecological crisis because today this forms part of multiple dimension of global crisis we find ourselves living through. But what is equally important is that the multidimensional global crisis we talk about is also political. Since 2008 financial crisis, we have started witnessing a growing right-wing movement all over the world, such as National Front in France, Northern League in Italy, Party for Freedom in Netherlands, and UK Independence Party. Because of depressed economics, racist Europeans have started to mount a campaign 
against immigration from the Middle East and Africa, and discontent with economic policies of European Union. The rise of racists like Donald Trump and other reactionary wing leaders is an indication of growing instability in the world. The trade war between China and the U.S. is not something which should underestimate, we should underestimate it as it will further destabilize the global economy. What is ironic and important no to note especially is as it relates to our cardinal pillar number five, massive protected industrial development to create millions of sustainable jobs, including the introduction of minimum wage in order to close the wage gap between the rich and the poor close the apartheid gap, wage gap and promote rapid career path for Africans in the working, work, workplace. U.S. is trying to protect its economy, especially manufacturing sector to create jobs. It is now China that is pro-globalization because they had time to build industries through protectionist, protectionist and policies and now all ready to sell to the world. This will include reviewing some of international agreements, including the World Trade Organization, the trade agreements that have killed our textile manufacturing in sector, and Houghton province suffered the most, given that the province contributes more than 40% to the country's manufacturing, manufacturing in 1995. And this continues to be the largest contributor. The continent has tra traveled a long journey of political emancipation and is still fighting against imperialism and continues to try to address social and economic challenges. It is always important, fighters, to remember that, to remember that what we stand here today, following the footsteps of selfless, so socialist-oriented, most important, honest and consistent leaders who fought to eradicate all forms of colonialism. Professor Wangari Matai, who teaches us the importance of protecting our beautiful natural environment and coexist with it profitably for our collective benefit through a Green Belt movement. Julius Nyerere, a Pan-Africanist and formidable socialist. Wininomza Mumadigizela Mandela, a fighter, a visionary, a selfless through and through, and she never sold us. However, we must also recognize that today Africa faces many governance and economic and social problems. To be precise, the continent has experienced its fair share of post-colonial disaster, and I will just mention a few. The people of Eswatini and the world stood with us at the height of our oppression and never abandoned us in our liberation struggle. Today, in their time of need, we owe them our full support. The conduct of the Eswatini family is a declaration that all Eswatini embassies in the world must become sites where internationally, international solidarity is shown. We will continue to call upon all peace and freedom loving South Africans and Africans and the world to, to picket in all diplomatic offices of the despotic family government of Eswatini. Never rest until genuine multi-party democracy is allowed freely in Eswatini. We call on the people of Mozambique and South Africa who reside at the border gates of Eswatini to intensify demonstration and low-lying low border fence of Berlin Conference that deserve no respect. We must stand against this position of Cameroon President Paul Bia, who has been in office since 1982, which is called more than 38 years. We must continue to call on our rivals and the contents, in particular Raila Odinga, who, who, who Odinga to accept the result of the election, of which he accepted at the last stage. Then in Burundi, Pere Kurunzinza has been in the office for almost 10 years, in which the people of Burundi were arrested tortured and killed for opposing him. We welcome the new appointment of His Excellency President Ndaishimiye, who inherits an isolated country under suction with national psych damage for years of political violence. Fighters, 
we must always remember the wisdom for our ideological forefathers that capitalist production therefore develops technology and combining together for various processes into social whole. Fighters and commissars, this assembly must engage on Afropho Afrophobia as a political currency which we see mushrooming now. We must engage all mushrooming political things which are happening in our province and make sure that as branches of the EFF we close rank and protect our people against people who doesn't have direction, who, who are self-seeking, who are not going to serve our people in this province. There is something called Operation Dudula, which we must be head on. I must say in front of the delegates here, the leadership of Tswane, how they acted and protected our people there in Kalafung, so that they must not be embarrassed by this Operation Dudula. We must commend also the fighters of Johannesburg, who confronted them also in Johannesburg. That itself fighters and commissars, it shows that the EFF is alive on the ground because we know what's happening on the ground. That's why we can confront those people head on and make sure that we protect our people. We are not going to allow people who are masquerading in our province as something which want to lead the community. Can this is an agenda of the ANC because they want to do other things by our voters. The EFF in Gauteng delegates and leadership here on top. I must repeat this. The EFF in Houghton lost 60,000 actual voters in three metros during 2016 local government election. This is a matter of concern, which I appreciate, and it's like I spoke with the deputy president because he analyzed it and even told us as the leaders of this province and members that we must at all time guard the gains of the organization. Self-critique and critique and go on the ground and work. Fighters of Johannesburg, you know what you did in Ward 53. The commitment we show and the increase and we beat that action A. It shows that we can do more than that if we are united together as leadership in branches. I want to commend the leadership of West Rand, World 29, where we won a ward under the leadership of the person who's reading this report. <laughs> because other leaders of provinces, when they say they won a ward in a CCT meeting, Commissioner Moshe knows, but break a mola. But World 29, we must break by the work of the organization and continue to compete so that we can close. We can close and deliver what the organization wants. That's what we are here for, to serve. A critical point in the final analysis is to answer this question. How do we double our 2021 votes that amounted to 631 Seven, uh, six, six hundred and six, uh, six hundred eighty one, seven six five, and go beyond the double figure in the next elections. We must double the votes of the EFF. We need selfless fighters on the ground. This is the year of the branch, and it presents the opportunity for the EFF to demonstrate proper understanding of governance, to ensure oversight, proper services to their communities but it also presents a challenge in that while it is important to demonstrate such capacity, the growth of the organization must not take the back foot. It is therefore critical that all the branches are in good standing and combat ready to defend economic freedom in our lifetime. Commissars and fighters, the EFF funding manifesto correctly points out that the attainment of political freedom is not enough we need economic freedom in our lifetime. That will be the solution of our people because we are going to give them land which they don't have, which under the current leadership, they have been sold the land in front of us. I'm happy to, to congratulate 
the region of Tswane, who just occupied the land and die with our people on the trenches. That's what we are here for. We must give our people land and make sure that that land we, we stay in and uh, the leadership there in Tswane, they were at the forefront. Fighters, I want to say this because the provincial secretary will deal with it sometimes on the organization report. But the office of Ikurulene region is very nice. It tops, it pays Zulu, it is That's what all of us, we must be proud because when you don't have a nice office, you can't even attract nice people. You must have a nice thing so that you can attract nice people. So we must follow we, the chairpersons of the regions, and the, the current provincial leaders who are going to be elected to make sure that we compete with that office of Ikurulini. But da delegates, I can say because I'm deployed there in Ikurulini from 2018. Delegates, as we end over the, move, the movement, I wish to state in my final remarks the EFF is the last hope of our people. It is the only left alternative left. Let me take you back. We are not building a reactionary party. We are building, we are not building a populist. We are not building grandstanding movement. We are building an organization which will take care of its people. An organization which will be corrupt free. If you are corrupt, start to run now. The leadership you have spoken because we are going to arrest you and charge you within 60 days. Therefore, uncompromising maximum discipline must be maintained at all material times. We do not have leadership crisis here. Engage each other, lobby correctly, pronounce on ideas, and advance of our struggles. On discipline, it is inherent tradition of Marxists to critique and self-critique. As Mao expounded, we, don't, we do not fear the truth, but critique to build not to lose a fighter. We must love each other. We must make sure that we remain in this party because we don't have any home except economic freedom fighters. This is our only home where each and everyone must belong. Fighters, the last thing which I want to say, that is why we fearlessly say, when we deploy you comrades to various responsibilities, you have to show discipline and deliver. When we hit the ground, show face. Attack the enemy by its horns. When we go for the buffalo, show face and put it down. When we remove the ANC in power, show face and defeat it. When we defeat the enemy agent, we remain disciplined. Amanda! Away to No Makubio! No Makubio Siaya Siaya No Ma Vese Tuvolas Vesi Shaya Vesi Vopa No Ma Vese Tuvolas Vesi shaya, vesi wapa. Pambele, pambele, siaya, siaya. Pambele, pambele. Manta, away to Mata, Karuna, Hi Moral. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Sheriff. Uh, we are
are proceeding with our program. Fighters, we are now going to allow hands. So this is how we are going to do it. We are going to do it two per region, gender balance,